So I want to start by saying we are living in such dark times. And I think one of the changes in the last 10 years is how much um, harm and damage has been done in the last 10 years um, and how many more people are feeling the impacts of the climate crisis. I think there are communities that have been bearing the brunt of it for years and years. And the last statistic I saw from the Union of Concerned Scientists was that since May 1st, 100% of Americans have gotten a extreme weather alert. Um, what has also happened during this time is that many, many more communities of faith are galvanizing. Uh, I lead an organization that's only four years old, Dainu, a Jewish call to climate action. Um, and I think that that is a reflection of, it's on the shoulders of other Jewish organizations, but the activism that we're seeing across faith communities, I think is at a, a, new, a new level. There are lots of important developments. I'm so glad that you gave a listing, um, Fletcher, because I really just want to speak about one development in the last 10 years, which is that the climate crisis is not only a political, social justice, ecological issue, it's also an issue of the soul. And I think that there is a growing recognition of that among faith communities and a growing recognition of the need to spiritually resource people in the face of the climate crisis. There are, of course, pioneers. I'm thinking of Joanna Macy, the grandmother, one of the grandmothers of this work through her work that reconnects. But we are seeing many more communities build upon that work. Um, and I think that we're also seeing it, some of that actually comes from the broader social justice movement. I think one of the things that came, maybe the only good thing that came out of the Trump presidency, was that in the resistance that built up, there was so much damage and so much despair that social justice movements began to recognize the need to spiritually resource people in that work. So if you think about the secular climate movement and the power of song in the Sunrise Movement or workshops that Extinction Rebellion started to develop, so all the more so in faith communities and a growing understanding of the need for us to be giving people spaces to confront those really hard climate emotions. For some, that's grief, loss, anger, guilt. I think it's different, and I think it's different across the generations. I think different generations are metabolizing or confronting this in different ways. It's a conversation for another time. But I think that we are seeing things that we never heard of before, climate chaplaincy whole area of work now that is emerging. When I started Dainu and I said, we're building a spiritually rooted Jewish climate movement, we're gonna be mobilizing for systemic political change, and we're going to be developing what we're calling spiritual adaptation. Talk about climate mitigation and adaptation, spiritual adaptation. People were like, I get the political stuff, what's this like hoo-hoo thing that you're doing? People don't ask that anymore, because climate grief and climate anxiety is so much in the zeitgeist and there is such um, power in the way that faith communities are picking this up, knowing that this is what it means to engage people meaningfully in this time in history. So we know that we need this work and we've developed this work to spiritually resource people in the face of the climate movement, people who are engaged in this, all of you, in this really hard and holy work, in it for the long haul. The question I have is whether this is also a way to bring people into the work. I think one of the challenges we all face, you asked about challenges, is how to engage more people in the work. We know that most Americans are concerned about the climate crisis, but most are not engaged. Or if they're engaged, it's not commensurate with the scale of what's happening. And I think people don't know what to do. I also think that there is an emotional overwhelm. I think there's a sense of like disassociation. It's too much to imagine what our future will hold for ourselves and our children. So people sort of disassociate, get busy with their lives. And I wonder whether some of this spiritual resourcing could actually be a pathway in. If people can, I have this image of like everyone throws themselves against the closet door, like I don't wanna go there. We all have friends and family members who, you know, yeah, yeah, I know, but could we use some of this spiritual resourcing to give people space to grapple with the really hard climate emotions, not to stop there, to cultivate active hope and to move into courageous action rooted in our faith and our spirit and our traditions and our teachings and rooted in community. So you asked about uh, challenges and missed opportunities. There's a lot uh, more work to be done and I'm looking forward to the second part of this conversation to share some of that.